Thank you so much. I was told that, um, that people that are very successful spend a lot of time dreaming. And there's a great deal of truth in that because through dreaming we can imagine. We can imagine what's possible. And those people that are very successful, both male and female, go out and dream and imagine what they would like to see. So they have a vision. And then they set that vision to a goal and to an objective. At our company too, we spend quite some time dreaming. Some would say a little bit too much time. But we spend time dreaming about what is possible. And then we come back and we challenge our team to try to achieve those targets. My uh, presentation today is just not for the technocrats. They're for the dreamers, for, for the innovators, for the people that can imagine what hasn't been imagined. If we could just take for a moment and reflect back to some of the great innovators of the past, the, the people that could dream. You know, people like Alexander Graham Bell, and Leonardo da Vinci, and people of that ilk that were being taught constantly. Yeah, you can dream it, but, yeah, or imagine it but it ain't going to happen. And some were convinced in, in a not too polite way to just give that away. But I do ask you for a moment to just dream with me for a little minute. Dream about the possibility of actually printing a human organ. Printing a heart that could potentially include its own power source. My heart's really dreaming, so when your heart wears out or any other part of your body, you could go out and just hit a button and get a new one. Well, you know, the fact, of course, is you don't have to dream anymore. It's happening today. Today, there's a lot of development going on in creating new livers that actually work. This is not imagination. This is not about uh, tomorrow. We have an innovation here, too, which is magic. And if I point at that, we, we change the slide. And then we point at it again, and we change the slide again. And we talk about the dreaming that's necessary. It's been said um, that we're living in an unbelievable time of change. And I happen to agree with that. It's like the Industrial Revolution on meth. If you understand, if you, uh, we used to say speed, by the way. But the meth, I'm told, is, is much more popular today. Uh, if, if you imagine the turmoil that the Industrial Revolution uh, brought to the world, this technology offers the same opportunity. You see the thing of magic. It's ever since the Industrial Revolution, it's been said many, many times that imagination is absolutely critical. Because even in the Industrial Revolution, when new uh, equipment, new possibilities came about, it was only imagination that brought it forward. If we stick with uh, what we knew, we wouldn't move forward. And I suppose it, it, it acknowledges um, Einstein's often quoted the quest, is imagination more important than knowledge? The fact, of course, if we can't imagine, if we can't imagine the future, then, of course, uh, knowledge is, uh, becomes redundant in time. It has also been said a number of times, and I'm sure that some here would agree with me, that the digital revolution has brought a new possibility into the world today. Some have argued that digital technology has become far more important than learning to write, or even the printing press. And there's a reason for that thinking, and that is because it allows us to transmit an awful lot of information, not just around the globe, not just around Australia, not just around Victoria, but inside machines. We can package a lot of information. You think about your little iPhones that we've all got, and the capacity of that already. So, I contend that the world is poised, it's on the cusp of massive change. It didn't work that time. Today, with 3D printing, the technology allows us to print in any complex ge geometry. Now, for those engineers amongst us, and there's a few here, they will say, oh, you know, that's not possible. But the, but the reality of 3D printing is that you lay it down one layer at a time. And that makes printing almost anything possible. And today, as we speak, they are, are printing in nylon, in glass, in chocolate, for those people that like chocolate, not many of those, and of course titanium and other things. I didn't actually point, but I'm happy you changed that. Thank you. Um, Barack Obama, when he first came to office, 
said that 3D printing would revolutionize manufacturing. He saw that almost as one of his most immediate uh, uh, demands to change uh, American manufacturing. So he put in hundreds of millions of dollars in the first year. This year alone, he's put in another $1 billion in just developing this technology. So is 3D printing the next industrial revolution? That's a big call, I know. The industrial revolution, if you think about it, some people will argue that it happened at other times, but about the middle of the 17th century, somebody came up with the idea of a, of a steam engine, which allowed a great deal of power to be harnessed and then utilized for manufacturing. Lots of other things happened, but behind the development of industrial revolution and of its technology was a massive change in how the economy worked and how people interacted with each other. So the Industrial Revolution has many aspects to it, but from a social perspective, it was dramatic. At one point, there was less than 15% of the people living in cities, and that translated, changed to 85%. And we still see that happening today. More and more people are moving into cities to find jobs, to find employment, to find careers going forward. But it also changed how the economy ran and how it sustained itself. It was an agricultural economy that went into a manufacturing economy. But it relied on a pro centralized process, very much so. And so schools were organized to teach people in a particular way to feed this demand. So the Industrial Revolution changed the whole concept of how people behaved and reacted, interacted, but there is one dark side of the Industrial Revolution that sometimes we tend to forget. And that is that the Industrial Revolution really only benefited the Western economies as we know it. It was now going, of course, into the Eastern countries. But um, countries like Africa still miss out. You can see that on the TV all the time. So it was, you know, the Industrial Revolution has been good for some, but really hasn't been good for everybody. You know, I've talked about the changes in society. There was good things too, too, too. Today we have fantastic hospitals, we have fantastic interaction, we have fantastic uh, uh, transport systems all developed because of this initial industrial revolution. Henry Ford brought all that together in a sense when he developed the, the, his factories and this production process that he had today. But it relied on bringing people together to make lots of things to pay for the heavy cost of that infrastructure. So we need to remember that. 3D printing is a new phenomenon. Just a child came along only about 40 odd years ago. In 1970 something, we invented the inkjet printer. And if you think about the inkjet printer, it sort of gives you a hint of what 3D technology printing is. About 10 years or so later, Someone innovated because he dreamed about what was possible. We've got this inkjet uh, printer that just puts a powder or, a, or an ink on a piece of paper, and he asked himself the question, what if we just keep adding to it? What would happen? But in he did that, when he did that, it just didn't hold. It didn't congeal, and he came up with this new laser beam, and that was the game changer. The moment he did that, it just changed the whole uh, direction of 3D printing. It made it then possible, not just a theory, not just a dream. So in 1984, this technology is, is, is really new. And as I said already before, the ability to print all sorts of things became real. And I can talk about a few of these things. 3D printing is that layer upon layer, and plastic, and wood, and metals, and bi biological materials. One of the things that it also has done is allowed us to be imaginative. And here's a very simple example of a 3D printer, and I think it will just reinforce what 3D printing is. Here we see a pancake uh, mixture being just printed onto a, a warming plate. And if you can imagine that being printed and then warming, and you've got your little pancake in the shape of a horse, I'm loath to point at it, um, then you can add another layer, and then another layer, and another layer, and eventually you end up with something. A little bit more complex. 
You know, if you've got heart problems and you go to a hospital and you want a hospital to look after you, you know, they have to put all sorts of monitors on you. Well, today the te technology exists to actually print a net that can be fitted around your heart with, uh, with uh, little modules on it, and you just walk past the processor and they can read everything that's happening to your heart. That's happening today. Those that have chronic back injuries, you know, their cartilage is in the back of their, in their backbone. If that's destroyed, there's not a lot you can do about it, except today. Today can be printed. Because it's actually such a, such a simple uh, compound, or whatever you describe that part of your body, that it can actually be printed. Is it ready yet for human beings? No, not yet, but we're at that stage that this is actually possible, and this is happening, and they're experimenting with this as we speak. Now, the, the, the toughest challenge that anyone could face ever is trying to print makeup. For those people that are into makeup, and I can see some gentlemen here that are, this is a challenge. Uh, today, already, we are printing and can print. This is, again, this is not something you have to dream about or imagine. This is this machine that you're seeing there. I see us having to print. Uh, you see this machine and that it, it can print to any color, any shade, lipstick, uh, tartar, whatever else you want. The car that you see there actually went around Hockenheim uh, racing circuit. Those people that know Hockenheim know it's a huge track, infamous, sadly, it's cost a lot of lives. This vehicle actually drove around it and actually broke speed records in doing so. It's totally printed, except for the engine, except for the, uh, the, uh, the wheels, except for the tires, is totally printed in 3D technology. That was three years ago. Today, you can print that car, including the tires, including the wheels, including the engine. It can be done. Technology exists, and, and prototypes have been built. Exciting? You, are you excited? You think this is fantastic? You're being very quiet. Yeah? So now I can point at it again. This is actually the most exciting innovation, I think, because it actually validates uh, the comments that are being made today about what 3D printing can do. Us electro electronic circuit boards. I'm too old to understand that technology, but I'm sure there's a few amongst us that can understand what that means. When you can actually print a working circuit board. It is amazing. Now, there was a company that was really excited about it and, and went on TV and said, in three years' time, we will have a printed circuit board. They said that about a month ago. Two weeks ago, a company came out and launched their 3D circuit board. And they said that we've done all the research, we know all about it, and I can just give you some example. This is actually printed from our printer. When we printed this the first time about three months ago, two months ago, this was it, you know? We were so excited, absolutely printed. Now, We've developed far enough, we can open the doors, we can take it apart, we can open the windows. So even in our short little time, we've experienced of it. People don't believe this, but this is printed. We didn't touch it, but this is printed. You can have a, a nut on there or whatever else. Just to give some idea of what's happening in this technology. These uh, little things are all interconnected, and you, you turn one, and they all turn. This wasn't put together, this was printed as such. In my home country, I've had my lobotomy, so now I'm Australian. Uh, uh, in my home country of Holland, we've actually taken this a bit a step further. We thought, bugger, building little cars or little shock absorbers, we'll build houses with this technology. And they are, in fact, doing that today. There's actually a house being built in 3D tech, with this 3D technology on one of the many, 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 many canals that we have in Holland where we hide all of our bikes. Actually, some say we, where we store our bikes. So, you know, this, uh, te this technology is real. I didn't realize how fast time went. Don't, don't switch it. I didn't mean that, because that's a good shot, shot for those that are interested. I mean, there's not many, but there are a few that would be interested in this particular one. And this is actually, this, this um, a huge amount of clothes this young lady is wearing is actually printed. It's amazing, isn't it? It gets a bit cold in winter, but other than that, pretty good. So, uh, uh, 
how is it justified, and I've got three minutes left, how is it justified uh, in economic terms that we are facing another industrial revolution? In economic terms, uh, this is creating opportunity. All of a sudden, the industrial revolution that we know limited that development or held that development close to the Western world and now penetrating some of the Eastern countries. This allows a lower economy of scale to come into play. A little simple machine that can be placed anywhere in the world and it can print itself. So all of a sudden, economic growth can be, can be sent to other parts of the world that have missed out so far. So does it tick that box? I think it does. If we look at job creation, of course, when we transfer this technology, when we can send the digital footprint through the internet or whatever else to print this off, could you imagine somebody in the, the Sudan who needs, sadly, a new arm? We can actually send it down to a machine, and a doctor in, in, the, in England can actually sense it, send down, send down the program, and a new arm could be technically printed. So great job, job creation at all levels, possibility there. Of course, devolving from that, will this be an educational revolution? Yes, because you know it is now more the mind than ever. The imagination's got to come into play. But I, I've said often, for those people that are looking for a fantastic career in the future, then IT is fantastic, I know, but engineering is the future. Yeah, maybe combine it when you're really desperate. <laughs> Sorry, Tim. Now, you should combine them because it does need that sort of technology and that sort of understanding. So education will change. It will change dramatically. Will it provide health outcomes, dramatic health outcomes? Yes, it will. It already is doing that. When you can print livers and hearts and when you can print all, print all these things, you can print uh, these very complex human organs, the next step is not too hard to imagine. Migration. Will this in enhance migration? Will it reverse the trend of people moving into cities and staying in the country? For those people who have the luxury of living in beautiful Bendigo, this is a great question. And the answer to that is yes, because this will truly, I know we've talked about it, a lot about IT devolving manufacturing, but this will truly provide that opportunity. In the environment, absolutely, the recycling of this material is there and happening now. In fact, we are investigating the recycled steel technology to print in steel. Uh, these technologies will combine to accelerate gro growth. So, in conclusion, Will this uh, change? I think it does. If, if it doesn't see an industrial revolution happening, it's certainly the beginning, or we are part of a new industrial opportunity coming to us. So hopefully, with 10 seconds left to go, I've made my case that 3D technology is, in fact, part of the industrial revolution. Thank you so much.